I'm here with Ian McNeese of, of Doctor Who fame, as well as, as Dune and a lot of stage and other kinds of screen stuff. Um, so first off, what's it like being in Long Island for a Doctor Who convention? Well, I've known Kendi for some years now, and I was delighted when he said that he was going to front this um, Long Island convention for the first time. And uh, I'm thrilled to be here and thrilled to support him because I think he's a great guy. Was Winston Churchill versus the Daleks or Winston Churchill on stage more uh, interesting as an actor or fun? Or well, I mean, I had a good time in both. I mean, I did originally, I was uh, um, in a production called Never So Good, which was a play written by Howard Brenton about Harold Macmillan, one of our prime ministers, played by Jeremy Irons, and I played Winston Churchill in that of the National Theatre. So that was a huge challenge in itself. But that was the first time I did it. But then I. I got excited because uh, uh, the producers and uh, the casting director from Doctor Who came looking, came knocking on the door because they needed a Winston Churchill and they came to see me in the play and somehow the two of us clicked, which was great. And so I was able to take that performance and put it into Doctor Who. It's slightly different because it's uh, uh, more naturalistic on stage. The one we did for the film version with uh, Matt Smith was uh, heightened reality, which meant it, it sort of up a couple of notches and you, you've got him being twinkly and me being double twinkly and so we would twinkle together, which is great. The twinkle off. The twinkle up, twinkle up, absolutely. Um, you've, I mean, along with Churchill, you've played a lot of characters from different historical periods. So the, the Doctor Who convention question, uh, if, if you had the chance to go to any historical period on trip in the TARDIS, where would it uh, where would it be? Do you know it's an interesting question? I mean I have a few times before. I think uh, I think around Henry the Eighth would be fun. Especially in one of his gargantuan meals. I'd quite like that, you know, where they stuff a bird inside another bird and then another bird and then even another bird. I mean I could I could hack some of that I'm sure. You're also you're also pretty well known for sci fi fans for uh, for being uh, Baron Harkonnen in Dune. Baron Harkonnen in Dune was um, certainly one of the highlights of my career and it's, it, it's, it's a part that I championed for and I really wanted to play. Having seen the film version, the David Lynch version, and saw how the Baron floated in the sky and in the air with that, I just, I had to have a piece of that myself. I thought it was a fantastic character and I loved the idea of, uh, of, uh, of being that bad. So I really wanted it. So um, um, uh, they, they asked me to do a screen test and at the screen test I was working on a TV show at the time with the very young boy called Daniel Radcliffe <laughs> before he even became Harry Potter we did this uh, version of David Copperfield it was the first thing he'd ever done it was a wow. great little show with him Maggie Smith was there and Bob Hoskins and I played this character called Mr. Dick interesting choice of name <laughs> and uh, I had this bald wig on and I had a sort of comb over that went with it, and so a uh, rather strange looking individual. And then I, at this audition I did for the Baron, I took off the wig and just had the ball wig on and did this speech to a camera. The DP at the time helped me do it. And at the end of it, I sort of ripped off the, the ball wig and, and my own hair appeared underneath it. And it was very weird and sort of, sort of spooky-like. And apparently the director, of Dune, who saw it for the first time, went, oh my God, I've got to have him. He looks really interesting. So <laughs> that's how I cracked it. That's how I hooked it. So once I got it, I was delighted. And uh, then I uh, you know, had to work out, I was desperate to find out how we were going to fly. Because, uh, you know, I'd heard from friends of mine, Richard Griffiths, God rest his soul. I knew it had a tricky time with Harry Potter flying because he's a heavy guy. So I kept on sending these emails and I didn't hear him another thing about them and then, then, and then, then on the day I got to Prague where we filmed it and was talk, taken to the studio and I walked in and there was a seesaw crane which it's like a crane but like a seesaw so on one end there's all these weights on the other end was this sole bicycle seat and they said okay sit on that so I sat on it and they strapped a little harness to me and they lifted me up and I went higher and higher and higher right under the up to the roofs of the studio, which was great, and they moved me around. Terrific, very comfortable, fine. Came back the next day, and there was no bicycle seat. I said, well, what's going on? She said, well, the trouble was, it looks like you were sitting, and we need you standing. So they then provided something <laughs> called a 
racing bicycle sleeve, and this is like a thin, yeah, very piece thin piece of leather which just goes for agony, absolute oh. agony for any man who has a little moment down there. And so <laughs> they, uh, they then decided to. Um, I said, "You got help, guys, help me out here," and they. They built some struts that went down the side of my legs behind, and then I could stand on them too. So between the two of them, it was much better. Oh, that's good. But that's how I flew, which was great. Very cool. And at the end of it, at the end of it, the guy who'd been steering me around was this Czech guy, and I, on my final day, I, I, I wheeled in a whole 28 crates of Czech beer, and I said, you have been my legs in motion for the last seven or eight weeks. This is for you. Now you can go and get legless yourself. <laughs> and indeed he did. What uh, What's ahead for Ian McNeese? Well, I've been making this series in uh, England called Doc Martin, which I yeah. think has come over here now. Uh, and I know that because I get stopped quite a lot of times in the street or in airports saying, are you that guy from Doc Martin? And uh, so we did do in England, little set in a little fishing village in Cornwall, beautiful place with a grumpy doctor. And I play this uh, rather Rassible, um, uh, sort of, well, he was a plumber, he now runs a restaurant badly and uh, gets into all sorts of scrapes with his son. And we've now done the sixth series of that and looks likely that we'll make another seventh one. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And I think n next week I'm going to go to Boston to uh, launch this new series of six here in America. So, so looking forward to that. Very cool. Thank you for sitting down with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Good time.